Good morning. We have assembled here in this place this morning that we might give our God the worship that he deserves for his worthy of all worship and praise. Let's put our hands together and give the Lord the praise for we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise.
worship the Lord. Let us forget about ourselves and concentrate on him and worship him. Show forth the worth he has in our lives with the service we give here today. Our reading is lifted from Hebrews, the 10th chapter, beginning to read at the 19th verse and through the 22nd of the King James Version. And it reads in this fashion, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, in heaven and high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in with pure water. The word of the Lord.
I just want you all to continue playing for a while. Just keep playing. Church, I want you to close your eyes. Bow your heads and just focus in on the Lord. Meditate upon his goodness toward you. How good, how great, how wonderful he is in our lives. Just see him now. See him now. Experience him in this worship service. Open yourselves up and give him the praise. Unbridled praise. Unmuzzled praise. Put your hands together and let us give God a hand praise today. He is worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah to his glorious name. Praise him, praise him, from whom all blessings flow. In heaven they are praising him. If we can say it this way in about eternity, day and night. In other words, unceasingly, they continue to praise him. For he is worthy. Just to be in his presence prompts our praise. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we love you. We adore you. We magnify you. We exalt you on this glorious day that you have made. We have gathered that we might worship you and worship you in the beauty of holiness. Father, thank you for getting us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for giving us the presence of mind to be here this morning. Thank you for allowing us to be here without any grave events happening to us. Father, thank you that you allow us in your presence. Thank you, Father, that you accept our praise, that you accept our worship. And as we enter into this glad time of worship, Father, accept our worship and accept us in worship that we might continually give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for you're worthy of such and so much more. If we had 10,000 tongues, we could not thank you enough for your goodness toward us. Allow us, Father, to experience your power and your presence and your peace in this place today that we might leave here better than we were when we entered herein. Father, we thank you and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. It's all right to praise him, church. It is all right to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just when you think of his goodness toward you, nobody has to prompt you to give him the praise. Just think about the wonderful things that the Lord has done to you and done for you. Just think of those things. And you can't help but give him the praise. I know some of us say, I'm not all that emotional. Amen. We get emotional about everything but the Lord. But you ought to be emotional about the Lord. You ought to be open about your praise and not be ashamed to give him the praise. All that other weight that you carry, you should leave that outside these doors. And come in here and feel weightless in your worship of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Greetings in the great name of God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to all our visitors and guests. Good morning and God bless you one and all. Church, the Lord our God directs us, be still and know that I am God. He says, I will be exalted 
among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So it says in Psalm 46 and 10. Church, despite the challenges that come against the human condition and impacts this human experience, God is still sovereign. We're going through this time, this season of this virus, and yet God is still sovereign. It may look like he doesn't have control, but he still is in absolute control. And what you are experiencing now will soon be over and you'll be able to give God the praise. But I say, don't wait till then. Let's praise him now. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is still sovereign, and he will deliver you. Just, church, just be still. Amen. A few things we'd like to share, and the first is that we want you to continue praying for the Washingtons, in the passing of Sister Ursuline Washington, the mother to Kenneth, and uh, the mother-in-law to our own Sister Sharon. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. We also were made aware of the fact that uh, our good friend, uh, Pastor Courtney Jones, pastor of Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church here in the city of St. Louis, made his transition sort of suddenly, I believe, on yesterday morning or late last night. I'm not clear on when that was, but I do know he has, he has passed away. Uh, Courtney is no stranger to this church and certainly not to me, a man of about 55, 56 years of age. Um, uh, as the report goes, he sort of passed suddenly. So pray for his wife and their daughter. Amen. Amen. Keep them all in that family and especially that church. Can you imagine the shock they must be feeling this morning and when they got the news on yesterday? I got the news early yesterday when I was talking with another pastor friend of mine. And he said, did you know that Courtney passed? And I said, no, I did not. And it was a shock to me. That was the last thing I would have expected to hear on yesterday morning. So keep uh, Sister Jones and their daughter and that entire church family lifted up in your prayers. Also, the memorial service for uh, Juanita Ming, the cousin to Sister Donna Ming, will be held on this coming Friday, the 25th of February at 2 p.m. at Serenity Funeral Home, which is located at 1905 Union Boulevard, 1905 Union Boulevard. That's Serenity Funeral Home. That is Juanita Ming Memorial Service for her. Uh, pray for that entire family. She is the cousin to our own sister Donna Ming, who is not here this morning because she had a huge tree limb to fall and blocking her in, and so she had uh, someone to come and start to cut the tree limb up this morning, so she's not here for that reason, but pray for her and pray for that entire family, amen? amen. Mary Dixon, I believe, is that the name? All right, Dixon, and that's the aunt to Sister Rochelle Woolens. She has made her transition, and she was about uh, or was 100 years of age. Uh, she was a resident of uh, Albany, New York, and uh, they had the service on Friday, I believe, the 18th, I believe, in New York, in Albany, New York. Pray for that family. Keep them lifted up in prayer. She was the last of uh, uh, Sister Rochelle's mother's sisters or siblings, she was the last to go, and she was 100 years old. She lived a very long time. I was very familiar with uh, Sister Rochelle Woolen's mother, uh, ministered to her when she was ill and told her transition a number of years ago. So I understand how you are feeling because that was the last bit of your mother you could hold on to physically. But uh, we know that to be absent from this flesh is to be present with the Lord. Amen. 
Again, Sister Sharon, who is the sister of Brother Rory Primus, uh, is the, are there any arrangements that we should know about? The family will be meeting on tomorrow to make those arrangements, so we still don't have those arrangements as of yet. They are pending, but still we want you to keep that family lifted up in your, in your prayers. We want to, that is, Sister Irving and I would like to thank you for all of your, your well wishes and your expressions of love and kindness that you have shown toward us during the celebration and observance of our 49 years of marriage. We had cards sent to the home, we had text messages and phone calls, and we thank you so much for that, for thinking about us and caring about us to that degree. So thank you, thank you, thank you ever so much. And Sister Irvin, just turn around, stand up, turn around, and just wave at them, say, just, just with your hands, say thank you. Amen. Amen. 49 years ago. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember that 17th day of February, uh, cold outside, but the sun was just beaming and shining, and what such a wonderful day. Amen. I do remember, and she was looking all cute, and people say, she's still cute. Yes, she is, but there was a girlish cuteness about her. Amen. Amen. So she has this mature beauty that she has about herself now that we are certainly thankful to God for. We want you to just pray for all those families that we mentioned, and we want you to never, ever neglect or forget to pray for one another. Amen? Amen. Praise his, his holy name. And now that there's nothing else that claims our attention along the line of comments, uh, we are going to ask you to bow your heads again with us and let us petition the Lord again in this place this morning in the way of an altar prayer. And this is a prayer where it's pastoral in its nature, and we invite you to pray as I pray aloud for you to pray silently. Petition the Lord for what you will. Father in heaven, we never tire of telling you we love you. We love you, Lord, for you first loved us. For while we were yet in our sins, you sent your Son and our Savior, Jesus, to die for us, expressing the intensity of your love, the value of this love, the truth of this love that you have for us. And we say thank you Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for loving us. Father, even though we are unlovable, you love us. There's nothing within us, no nothing, that would cause you to love us. You just love us. For you are love, love is of your character and nature. It is the essence of your being. And we are thankful that we have you, a God, the God, the only true living God to love us. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for Jesus, we're thankful that you sent him through 42 human generations. He, having been born in Bethlehem of the Virgin Mary, reared in Nazareth, ministered in Galilee, died upon the cross of Calvary, buried in a borrowed tomb, and on that third day morning, you raised him up. And so he forever lives. Thank you for your son and our Savior, 
Jesus Christ the Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father, who indwells all of us who truly believe in your Son. Father, thank you. Father, forgive us of our sin. For even those images of sin are with us in this moment of worship. Our minds have been impacted by sin. Our hearts have been impacted by sin. Our bodies have been impacted by sin. Father, we have willingly sinned. We have sinned by commission. And we have sinned by omission. Father, look on us. I pray thee and forgive us. For Father, we agree that what we have done is wrong. And we come to you, only you, for only you can forgive us of our sins. And it has been made possible through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Father, we pray for the bereft among us those who grieve. Grieving is, is very hard. And grieve we must. But you warned us, you told us, you encouraged us to not to grieve as those who have no hope. Father, for we have hope that though we die, yet shall we live again. Father, we pray for those whose loved ones have transitioned Father, that you will comfort them and console them in this season of their lives. Lord God, I pray that you will place your, heart, your, your hands of mercy firmly upon them, that they may experience your presence and experience a sense of relief because of it. Lord, thank you, for we know that it is already done. Lord, I pray that you help those who are going through, will get through, that they will get to what has already been done. Lord God, bless now and strengthen, we pray thee. Father, great God of ours, bless the sick among us. There are those who struggle to get here this morning because of the maladies that they suffer. Lord God, whether they are physical, emotional, mental, but Father, we know that you are our healer. You are Jehovah Rapha. You can heal us. And so we petition you for your healing and your help that we might always have a sense of hope despite these things that come upon us. Oh, Father, Bless now and strengthen those who are ill among us, those who are shut in, dear Lord, those who are upon their beds of affliction. Lord, we know that you're able to reach them. So, Father, we pray that you touch them right now as only you can touch. Bless these who are present here, for they have come here, Father, having a need, a gnawing need, to worship you. So, Father, we pray that you will allow them to experience you in worship today, that they will enter into their own beings and, and come, as it were, face to face with you, fellowshipping with you and you with them. Lord God, bless us today. And have us to realize that there is a reality in serving you, a true and living God. And that you are the God that never, ever fails. 
And Father, we trust you today. We trust you, Father. We rely upon you, Father. We depend upon you, Father. Bless the family of Pastor Courtney Jones. It may have been sudden to us. But it was an appointment, Father, that was already set. For it's once appointed unto man to die. And then after that is the judgment. We all have an appointment that we cannot refuse. We all have that appointment that we cannot cancel. And so, Father, I pray that as you have carried his soul away, that you allow his family who have been left to grieve to be comforted and strengthened in the days, the weeks, the months, and the years to come. Bless us in our worship today, Father. Father, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless the tithe, the offering, and the pledge, and those who did attend to it. Father, make it more than enough, that it might be enough and more than enough to support this ministry, that we might continue to reach out in every direction to all men, boys, girls, women, that they might be saved. Help us to continue to be a beacon light in this dark generation of man. Father, thank you. Just love you, Father. Love calling on you. Thank you. Bless the music ministry as they minister to your people and to your honor and glory. We say this and surrender this in Jesus' matchless name. And all the people of God said amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God bless you, church. God bless you.
God is too good for us to second guess him. He's too wonderful for us to not give him the praise. Just forget about yourself. Magnify the Lord. And worship him today. I don't know if you know it or not, this time may not come for you again. We lay down in li at night with the expectation of getting up in the morning. Just may not. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. You don't know what the next moment will be. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, church. I believe God. He has said in his word if these don't say anything he said he can make the rocks cry out and see I don't want any rocks crying out for me We got too many secret praisers, secret worshipers. God wants you to be out loud for him. Hallelujah. He has brought, I don't know about you, but he's brought me from a mighty long way. Solomon, we came along in a way that we didn't think we'd make it this far. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. When I think of his goodness toward me, all I can say is amen. Amen. Father, we have come, we have traveled, we've journeyed to this portion of the service that is pregnant and punctuated with preaching. And we desire, Father, that your word be delivered in our presence. For, Father, we have heard so many voices vying for our attention. But only your voice will do. So, Father, I pray that you'll take me today and speak a word. Speak a word into this atmosphere. Speak a word, O oh, Heavenly Father, into our hearts the very hearts of your people. For Father, we need direction. We need light in this darkness. So Father, take me now and use me as a willing instrument of your will that your will be done. And I pray that the words of my mouth well, as the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, my Redeemer, in Jesus' name, 
Amen. 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 There has been and is a dark side to the light of freedom that is America. The European colonists that settled in this already occupied country came partly seeking religious freedom and subsequently sought freedom from the crushing authority of a demanding and inattentive government. And though those settlers were seeking freedom, they denied freedom to the indigenous people of this country. Those seeking freedom, those settlers enslaved other people to realize the American dream of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the posterity of the enslaved have seen some semblance and sense of freedom due to the providential deliverance of Almighty God. God's deliverance gave and gives light to the dark side of the American dream and for the salvation of man. Church, let's see. Go with me, if you will, to Exodus, the 13th chapter, verses 20 through 22. And then we shall skip and do skip to the 14th chapter, verses 18 through 20. This is of the King James, Exodus 13, 20 through 22, skipping then to Exodus 14, 18 through 20. And of the King James, it reads in this fashion. And they took their journey from Succoth, and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Chapter 14, beginning to read at the 18th verse and through the 20th. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and a darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these. So that the day, so that the one came not near the other all 
the night. In the 13th chapter, we focus in on verse 22. He took not away the pillar of a cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. And the 20th verse of the 14th chapter, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. We want to talk about or preach to you today from this title, simply light to you. Light to you. Light to you. Despite your darkness, the Lord has some light for you. Amen, somebody. Despite, despite whatever is impacting your human condition and coming against your human experience in a dark way, the Lord still has some light for you. Amen, somebody. I think oftentimes we're so overwhelmed by the darkness that we forget about God's light. Even though he is showing you light all along the way. Is anybody listening to me? Amen, somebody. We're just like the children of Israel. They just moaned and cried, despite that God had some miraculous thing leading them all the way. Still moaning, wincing, and whining because of the pursuing Egyptian army. Now, I don't understand that the nation, the people of Egypt, was the greatest and mightiest nation there was on the face of the earth at the time. Who wouldn't be afraid? But I'm here to ask the question further. Who would be afraid with a God like that on your side? Light. To you. I personally have been in some very dark situation. I don't share a lot unless it's necessary. But despite the darkness and the hard times, God has already always brought me through. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. The chosen people of God, Israel, they migrated to fertile and fruitful Egypt due to a fierce famine in the land. You need to realize that Egypt had plenty. And most of the nations around them at that time, because of the famine, had very little. They were going hungry. And the Egyptians, the Pharaoh in particular, down through the centuries, would allow people to come over into parts of Egypt and enjoy their bounty. God has a way.
for a while, the people of God enjoyed relief from the famine. But their brief light turned to darkness. They were brought on by the decision to restrain and restrict them in enslavement. Their growing population was seen as a threat to Egypt's authority and control. They were growing in population and growing out of control. So Pharaoh sat and had counsel with his court. and They decided that they better do something about these Israelites. For well, their decision was to enslave them. But I'm here to tell somebody today, but, but man's decision cannot prevent divine deliverance. Does not matter how mighty Egypt was. God was and he is and shall ever be yet sovereign. God will give light to your dark situations. I don't care what darkness you are experiencing now. I don't care what darkness you may be sitting in. Now. It may be an illness. It, 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 it may be unemployment. It, it may be a wrecked marriage. It, it may just be anything but your darkness. It's not too dark for God's light to shine. The darkness of oppression, the darkness of exclusion, the darkness of social inequality. That darkness cannot overwhelm the light of God. After 400 years, the Lord God sent his servant Moses to lead Israel out of slavery to freedom under his divine deliverance. God himself heard the cry of his people. God sent his servant Moses to go to Pharaoh and say to Pharaoh, let my people go. Hallelujah, somebody. And so Moses went, and he did his best to impress upon Pharaoh. But Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go because Pharaoh was enjoying free labor that helped to build up the nation of Egypt. Is anybody listening to me? Sounds like a familiar story. Despite the oppression, despite the exclusion, despite social inequality, God has raised us up. Despite the boot on our necks, God has raised us up. One man said that if you straighten your back, no man can ride it. God knows how to straighten the back. God manifested his presence of guidance and protection to his people by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. There was a physical manifestation of the presence of God all the way from Goshen. 
Hallelujah, somebody. To the very banks of the Red Sea. Isn't that all right today? Praise the name of the Lord. Some call that manifestation a theophany. The manifestation of the presence of God. But I'm here to tell somebody, my brothers and sisters, God's deliverance is light to you. If you are experiencing light at all, it is because God has delivered you. Egypt didn't understand that soon as they left Goshen, they were delivered. Hallelujah, somebody. They went there with Brother Jacob and a family of 70 folk. And over 400 years, they grew to a population of over 3 million folk. And even though they were in bondage, they still continue to flourish. I tell you that God can deliver you even while you're still in bondage. God will take care of you. God has light for his people. God's deliverance is light to you. It is understood in the fact that God's deliverance is his persistent provision. God's deliverance is his persistent provision. The 22nd verse of the 13th chapter of Exodus. Also, God's deliverance is his persistent protection. God's deliverance is his persistent protection. Exodus 14 and 20. Hallelujah, somebody. God's deliverance is his persistent provision. I have come to understand and recognize that God just keeps on delivering us. God is with us, and he's with us for the express purpose of delivering us. Because we're always caught up and found, confronted by the chaos and calamities of life. God is with us. Yes, he is, church, to deliver us. Hallelujah, somebody. Greater than that you among all God's people ought to be happy today. You ought to be thankful for how God is keeping you. You'd be surprised of the very small participation is going on right now during this pandemic. But God is taking the little and he's making much out of it. Hallelujah, somebody. Meeting every need of the church. God's deliverance, church, is his persistent provision. In that 22nd verse of that 13th chapter, it reads, He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. It, that is God's deliverance, his presence persisted despite what they were going through. Sometimes we act as if things are too hard for our God. God never gives up on us, but we always give up on him. Somebody ought to say, ouch, leave me alone or something this morning. All of us are guilty of giving up on God. 
when you're going through some hard times and hard places, it's easy for us to throw up our hands and say, I didn't sign up for all this. Hallelujah, somebody. But with God on your side, God's deliverance is his persistent provision. The persistent command of Moses to Pharaoh to release God's people from slavery was forced and fortified by 10 overwhelming plagues. And each one of those plagues addressed a God that Egypt had. Egypt even regarded the Nile River as a God. And God overcame every last one of them by doing things with those things they considered to be God that they could not control. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. Ten overwhelming plagues for an approximate one year period. Some of us think it was a day or a week or a month. It went on for about a year until the people just got tired of it, didn't want any more of it. And when Egypt left, uh, when Israel left Egypt, they were, they were instructed to go to their Egyptian neighbors and get silver and gold from them. They didn't mind giving it up because they just wanted to see them go. It wasn't a loan, and they didn't have to pay it back. Isn't that how God will do it for you? God will make your enemy be a resource for you. Hallelujah, somebody. Alone with the final and finishing blow, those ten plagues. And after those plagues came this last crushing blow. And it was the death of Egypt's firstborn. The firstborn of all population. The firstborn of all their cattle. Even the firstborn of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh had had enough. They could not withstand the power of God. Hallelujah, somebody. The undeniable demonstration of those plagues was the penetrating proof of the power of the true God of Israel over the false gods of Egypt. And Pharaoh yielded to God's command and he finally let God's people go. Hallelujah, somebody. God gives everybody a chance to turn the wagon around. But if they won't turn it around, God will have his way. God will turn it around for you. I'd rather turn it around myself rather than God turning around for me. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm talking to somebody this morning. I know I am. You need to yield to God's command and turn that wagon around and do what God is bidding you to do. Come down out of your high chair of righteousness. Come down. God's providential power will overpower any and all opposition in your life that comes against you. God will take care of you. And as Israel was being delivered, God showed his care by showing them to their way out. Hallelujah, somebody. They had to travel through some wilderness. Three million people following an old man with a stick. 
talking about going somewhere they didn't know where they were going. Wilderness all in front of them. Egyptian garrison and outposts on the right side of them for miles and miles and days and days. Rocky terrain, hilly terrain, unpassable on the other side. And the only way for them to go was straight ahead. Straight ahead was the Red Sea. You say, well, why is that so bad? Well, there were no ships down there docked at the beach of the Red Sea. There was no bridge, oh, to take them over. But God said, just keep on going. I know you're sitting here and you can't see your way out of your dilemma. It just seems like it gets worse with every step you take. Am I right about it? But I'm here to encourage you, just keep on going. God will deliver you. God will take care of you. Hallelujah, somebody. God's deliverance is always based on God's direction. I talk to people every day and I, I, I hold my tongue off in time because I don't want to hurt folks' feelings. Hallelujah, somebody. And they always tell me about what they think. And I ask them, what did God say? Hallelujah, somebody. In God's word is direction for his people. Am I right about it? The Bible is clear when it says that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light upon our path. That light shows us where we stand. That light shows us the direction in which we need to go. I'm here to tell you, just keep on keeping on trusting in the word of the Lord. God set forth, set before Israel a pillar of cloud to guide them in the day. And a pillar of fire to be with them at night. You know, it's not hard when I'm driving in the day. I know where I'm going. And the route seems and is so familiar. I can almost drive there if I could blindfold it. Somehow I just make it. But soon as night comes, every turn I make, it looks different. Everywhere I go, all the landmarks, they look different. I'm glad. And I'm here to tell you that God has a nightlight. You have been some places in your life before. You know what it looks like. You know what to expect. But soon as night falls in your life, all of a sudden, things are not so familiar anymore. Even God. But God has a nightlight. Day after day, night after night, God's provision of guidance persisted. It never, it never ever left them. The cloud was there. The fire was there. They got across the Red Sea and it was still there. Forty years through the wilderness, and it was still there. Even when they got and had a structure for God to dwell in, as it were, that Shekinah glory rested there. Hallelujah, somebody. God promised never to leave us, nor to ever forsake us. Over and over again, day after day and, and night after night, 
of our lives, we are confronted with the chaos and calamities of life. But God is still there. Even when you can't trace him or track him, you need to still trust him. God will never ever leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. Hallelujah, somebody. God's deliverance is not only with you when you let go, but it's with you all the way, all the way that he would have you to go. May not know where you're going, but you need to trust God that he knows the way. Yes, he does, church. I'm here to tell you, been through it myself. <laughs> Some of the deliverance God has delivered me with <laughs> didn't look like deliverance at all. <laughs> but when I got over on the other side, <laughs> I was just like Miriam and those other women. <laughs> and I start to dance <laughs> and I gave God the praise. <laughs> I clapped my hands. I started running. I, I had a testimony what God will do for you. God's deliverance is his light, his light of persistent assurance and confidence that you will get through what you're going through and you will get to what you're going to. No matter what it seems like, God has not left you. God is still there. Not only that, God's deliverance is his persistent protection. If you go down to that 14th chapter of Exodus, and look now, if you will, with me, to that 20th verse, it tells us, and it came between, that is, that pillar of cloud, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians, and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, meaning the Egyptians. But it gave light by night to these, meaning the Israelites. So that the one came not near the other all the night. While the Israelites were traveling in Exodus, moving toward the promised land. Pharaoh's heart became hardened and it became political in his thinking. And he thought about all that slave labor that had been allowed to leave. And so Pharaoh got his best men. Pharaoh got his choicest chariots. Pharaoh got his choicest charioteers. And they chased after God's special people. Chased them and started closing in on them. Israel started shaking in their boots. Didn't know where to go because the only place to go was forward. And forward was the Red Sea. Hallelujah, somebody. What would become of them? So God has a way of persistent protection in your deliverance. He'll cause that which was guiding you to go behind you. Because sometimes things are just getting a little bit too close. Hallelujah, somebody. Mm. God's deliverance is his persistent protection. Approximately 
some three million souls of the enslaved Israelites. They left Goshen, the northeast section of Egypt, going to where God would lead them by his servant Moses. Mighty Pharaoh and his army behind. A bunch of family folk with an old man with a stick trying to get away. Am I right? Just think about how big and terrible some of your issues are. And here's little bitty old you trying to get ahead and get away. And unlike Israel Church, you ought to realize that you serve a big God. There's nothing bigger than your God. Come here, Brother David. Brother David was confronted by the giant called Goliath. Everybody had a fear of Goliath. Goliath was like a sunny listing of his day. Nobody wanted to get knocked out by Goliath. And here David is with five smooth stones and a slingshot standing before this physically impressive man and said, who is this filthy Philistine who dares to challenge my God? And he put a stone in his sling and he began to wind up his sling and he let that rock fly and it hit Goliath in the forehead and then it sunk in. Goliath fell back. David jumped on top of him. David took his heavy sword and took off his head. God has a way of delivering you. Am I right about it? No matter how small it looks, God is a big God. They left Goshen, going to where God would lead them. Goshen was far from the irrigation canals of the Nile. Goshen, the land unwanted by the pharaohs. Goshen, the land good for grazing and certain types of agriculture, but still not the land, the rich fertile land that Pharaoh wanted. Goshen, where Jacob and his family of 70 settled and became a people of three million. Hallelujah, somebody wouldn't let the African-American slaves here in this country have any of the bounty that they had to grow. They cooked the greens and cooked them down. They, they walked the walk called the whistler's walk when they walked from the out kitchen back to the big house with the meals that they had prepared. They had to whistle all along that walkway so they'll be found not eating the food and they got the food delivered, and all they could have was the stock from the ball down greens. But all of the vitamins that was in the greens was in the stock. God knows how. Ah. Hallelujah, somebody. Goshen, where Jacob and his family of 70 settled and became a people of three million. Goshen, brothers and sisters, God can take the forsaken possibilities of others and make it a bountiful blessing for you. They journeyed hostile lands, avoiding Egyptian army outposts, going through the wilderness. And when Pharaoh and his army closed in on them in hot pursuit the leading pillar of cloud repositioned between Israel's camp and the Egyptians camp separating the two 
being light for Israel and darkness for the Egyptians. Somebody is sitting here wondering why your mess hadn't caught up with you yet. God knows how to reposition his deliverance. Hallelujah, somebody. And your opposition can't quite see where you are. Can't find you in their own darkness. Hallelujah, somebody. But God has a way of separating the two. Being light for Israel and darkness for the Egyptians. God can separate you. He can separate you from and keep your past from catching up to you. You know how you got that crazy past that comes to mind every now and then. Hallelujah, somebody. Some folks that knew you when, they start telling your business and telling like it used to be. And you can feel your past getting mighty close to you. But God will open the eyes of those who are listening so they can see where you are and not where you used to be. God can separate you from and keep your past from catching up to you and keep it in the darkness of ineffectiveness. It can't do you no harm. I wonder, church, what's chasing you? Keep in mind, God has delivered you. God is, yes he is, providing for you. God is, right now, preserving you. God is still protecting you. So church, while waiting at your Red Sea, your Red Sea doesn't look like my Red Sea. Hallelujah, somebody. But all of us, we have a Red Sea. So while you're waiting at your Red Sea, Remember God really came in the flesh of man to deliver you from sin. Hallelujah, somebody. While you're waiting to be delivered, remember God has already delivered you and God's provision is persistent. Remember that God's provision, or rather deliverance, hallelujah, is his persistent protection. Hallelujah, somebody. So you need to remember when things are in hot pursuit and when your back is against the wall and you're in between a rock and a hard place. Remember that God has sent his son down through 42 human generations. He stopped off in Bethlehem of Judea. Born of the Virgin Mary. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Reared up in Nazareth. Ministered in Galilee. Buried in a borrowed tomb. Early, 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 early. On that third day morning. Hallelujah. God raised him up. 
Hallelujah. So that he can be light to you. So no matter how dark it looks. And I look at many of your faces and I see the darkness in your faces. And God wants you to know was darkness to the chaos and calamity that's in hot pursuit of you is light to you. Trust in the Lord and doubt him not. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Don't get mad with me. Just look like I'm sitting on a flowery bed of ease because I'm not. Don't get mad with your neighbor because it look like they're doing all right. Just trust the Lord. Trust him. Trust him. Make a step toward that resource of trust by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You can come now, come by letter, by Christian experience, come as a candidate for baptism. If you know not the Lord and the pardon of your sin, you can come today and come just as you are. With all your flaws, with all your doubts, with all your hurt and your pain, he wants you to come. He is the remedy for the sing, sick soul. Come to him today. He wants you to come. He bids you to come. For he says in that Christological invitation, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Rest unto your very soul. Come to him today. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised them from the dead and you shall be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe unto righteousness and it is with your mouth that confession is made unto salvation. God wants to save you. He wants to save you from the condemnation of sin. He wants to save you from an eternity in hell. He wants to save you from hell and all of its eternal consequences. And you say, God is too good to have a hell. He didn't create hell for us. He created hell for Satan and all his demons. And if we don't turn around from our evil ways, in hell will we lift up our eyes. There's a right and there's a wrong. There's saved and there's lost. There's light, there's darkness. There's heaven and there's hell. What will you choose today? Will you accept Jesus Christ? He's the only way out. Despite what men may say today, he is still. God's way. For he said that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but by me. He says, when you have seen the Father, you have seen me. He said, for I and the Father, we are one. Yes, God came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Isaiah referred to him as Emmanuel, God with us. Come and accept him today. He's the only way out. Yes, I'm that arrogant to say that. He is the only way out. Come to him today. Come. 
Father in heaven, we thank you for being our God. We're thankful for your saving our souls. Father, you have saved millions upon millions, and we shall all be delivered to an eternity with you in heaven. All of us who believe, for you shall have a new heaven and a new earth. Father, in your house are many mansions. If it were not so, Jesus would have told us. So, Father, we trust that all these manners, matters are true. They are true matters. And they are like true facts. They cannot be denied. Lord God, bless that one who is making a decision about you through your son, Jesus Christ. Bless that one by the unctioning of your Holy Spirit, your word already having been proclaimed. Lord God, be that that they need right now, right here, as only you can. And Father, we are thankful. We're thankful for your word. So enriching, so encouraging. Thank you for your word that we find to always be both lamp and light. And Father, it comes to mind. Bless the now widow and the daughter of a friend, Pastor Courtney Jones. Bless that church. For Father, we know how that feels here at Greater Leonard when our pastor passed away. But Father, you had a way out. You had light for our darkness. And so Father, we know you have the same for them. We thank you, Father, for all that you are and all that you do and all that you shall ever continue to do. In Jesus' name and for his sake, we say amen. 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 Bless you, church. Thank God always. And as we prepare to leave this place but never his presence, we do so in this fashion. Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with all of us, henceforth now and forevermore, let every believing soul say, Amen. Amen. God bless you, and go in peace. Go in peace. Bless you.